Today this video is going to be dedicated to Jeff Doughty and Jordan Manifold, uh, family friends that have passed away recently. Uh, I'd just like to pass my condolences on from myself and everybody here at the Unbearable Reds to their, their friends and family uh, from through what must be an un unbelievably trying period for you. Uh, all the best and um, yeah, at Neil, love you mate. Hello and welcome back to the Unbearable Reds. I'm your fully recovered host Carl and today we're going to be hopping into our time machine and taking a trip back to the late 1990s where we look at the reign of the first Liverpool manager recruited from outside the club, a man who brought a certain je ne sais quoi to Anfield, our glorious Frenchman Gerard Houllier. Houllier's story at Liverpool started in July 1998 after France had just won the World Cup. He was part of their setup and he was hired by Liverpool as a result of that. Now, Liverpool had been underperforming for the best part of the 1990s and we were in serious need of a boot up the arse to get us back on track. Houllier was, as previously mentioned, the first manager recruited from outside of the club in our history at this point, as our famous boot room setup had produced numerous uh, very successful managers I'm not going to name them all and go through the CVs you, you, you know it already and that was through the 70s and the 80s but in the 90s after Kenny Daglish left Graham Sooners from Roy Evans um, both took over one after another and uh, the boot room system just didn't seem to be working anymore and that resulted in poor performances poor league finishes and a trophy drought after this period of time the higher ups of the club decided to uh, part ways with Roy Evans and bring on Julier uh, but after it was agreed for Julier to take over, they got cold feet, which resulted in a, a, a bizarre agreement where Julier and Evans both managed the team jointly from the start of the, the 1998 season. Now, obviously, this was a terrible idea, and it did result in Roy Evans resigning in November of 1998 uh, on the back of a series of poor results. And this is when, Hul the, the, this is when the Julier era at Liverpool uh, truly began. Uh, he was now able to, to, to mould the club in his image, and now he was unshackled um, from um, the, the, the the dated old hat methods of Roy Evans. He was really able to get hold of the club, get hold of the team, and turn it into what we're going to go into right now. So why Houllier? Why was he an attractive prospect to Liverpool at the time? Well, Gerald Houllier was very much in the same mould of manager as Arsene Wenger, who had um, enjoyed great success at Arsenal at this point and would later go on to have even more success. That's in terms of like his strict management of the team, enforcing professionalism, strong discipline at the club, expecting his players to be professionals because at the end of the day that's what they were and um, this was something that was uh, desperately lacking from the, the from Liverpool at the time. We were just um, coming to the end of the Spice Boys era. Poor discipline and just a lack of respect for the management setup has been but was something that was synonymous with Liverpool through the 90s. And the only reason that came to an end is because Gerard Houllier came in and just completely changed everything. His CV wasn't too bad either, uh, having managed France in the late 80s and even uh, winning the league with PSG. Uh, this was in the 90s before the oil money when winning the, the French league with PSG meant something, because it didn't really happen uh, all that often until they were taken over uh, by um, uh, Qataris, I think. Really be said that, but it didn't. Sorry, guys. And also, uh, Julia had um, a bit of history with the city of Liverpool as it was. Uh, he lived there for a year in the 1970s. He taught French at Allsop High School and um, he, he attended the uh, Liverpool games on a number of occasions during that time. Um, so, you have a man uh, who has all the qualities the club's crying out for, a man who can modernise the club, he's got a good CV behind him, uh, good ideas and he's also aware of the, the culture of the club and the culture of the city and at this time he was the perfect man to come in for Liverpool. His first forays into changing the squad were largely successful, uh, first of all clearing out some of the old bad influences, uh, the less professional players of the squad, uh, the Spice Boys of the era, the likes of Paul Lynch, Jason McAteer, uh, David James, Steve McManaman to name a few, they all departed and they were replaced with uh, continental players who brought in a, a steely professionalism and discipline that we mentioned earlier into the team and these were players like Sami Hippier, Stefan Onsho, Didi Haman, Vladimir Smeiser and a few others. Uh, so, and the, the, uh, As I just said, that these disciplined continental players were just exactly what the club was crying out for. Defensive issues plagued the club throughout the 90s and it was something that was um, a lot of Liverpool fans were highly critical of during uh, the Roy Evans era in particular and Gerard Houllier came in and just completely cleaned house. 
it turned us into one of the best defensive outfits in Europe. And the signings continued into the new millennium. It was uh, with more of a blend of signings of continental and established good English players, or British players, should I say. So you had the likes of Marcus Babbel come in. You had Gary McAllister, a veteran midfielder at the time. Uh, Emil Heskey, when he actually scored goals. And we even signed Nick Barnby from Everton. Um, and this really took Liverpool to the next level. Um, and after two seasons of this rebuild under Julio, his revolution hit its peak and in the 2000-2001 season Liverpool won and at the time unprecedented treble bringing in the League Cup, the FA Cup and the UEFA Cup. Thanks to Julier, winning was something Liverpool were currently doing and not just a set of golden memories that we had and for a lot of us like myself I didn't have those memories, These, this, this was my first experience of winning trophies and it really gave that to me. And more importantly, in this season, Liverpool finished fourth in the league, qualifying for the Champions League. So, in a, so just like that, in the, in, in the space of two seasons, we'd gone from underachieving, a, a languishing club rotten from the inside, and we were now winning trophies again, we were back at the top table of the European football. Everything was just rosy, everything was perfect, everything was going so well. And yeah, it was it was a, a great time to be a Liverpool fan. During, also during the season, you saw the likes of Steven Gerrard and Jamie Carragher, players that would go on to really establish themselves as club legends, to cement their place in the squad and as key players for Gerrard Hulier. And then you also saw like Michael Owen win the Ballon d'Or and Heskey banging in goals. Em Emil Heskey, Emil Heskey banging in goals. Yeah, it happens. There's a reason he played for Liverpool, and it's because he could score goals, and Gerard Houllier turned him into that player. But unfortunately, this was very much the peak of Houllier's Liverpool, as in October of 2001, um, Houllier was taken to hospital during a half-time, during a, a, a tight game at Anfield against Leeds, having suffered a heart attack, and um, it, thankfully he made a full recovery, and he was back in the dugout uh, within five months. But it's something that definitely changed from that point on. The general feeling was that Houllier he was never the same after the heart attack, he wasn't the same manager, he wasn't as sharp, he wasn't as tactically astute as he once was. That That's a position that's backed up with um, the declining fortunes of the club performance-wise um, in the next couple of seasons, um, failing to qualify for the Champions League a couple of times and a string of poor signings such as um, El Hajduf and uh, Salif Diaw uh, really weighed down on the club. Uh, also the failure to replace uh, the departing Gary McAllister uh, and uh, Yari Lippmanen are also uh, some, some key uh, failures made by Julier during this time. And uh, sadly, at the end of the 2004 season, Julier and Liverpool parted ways. And that was despite him once again getting us back into the Champions League after a couple of seasons out of it. And after that, um, Rafael Benitez was brought in from Valencia and uh, the rest is history, so they say. So now I want to talk about my, my personal feelings towards Gerard Julier and his reign at Liverpool. Um, for me, this is the most important time for the club in terms of progress in my lifetime. Obviously, the 70s and the 80s and the 60s were very important in the grand scheme of things, but just in my lifetime, this era, Julio coming in and changing the club into what it, into, into what he made it, I can't think of anything that's happened in my lifetime that's been more important than that. Julio took the club that was st stuck in, it's like it's, it's old fashioned ways, it was dogged by dealer players, poor results, lacking in any real success for the best part of the decade, and he turned us back into one of the top teams in Europe. And also, as I mentioned earlier, Gerard Julio gave me a taste of what it was like to win trophies. Now, gentlemen of my age growing up will have always heard their, their, their parents, uncles, um, talking about the growing up in the, the 70s and the 60s and being able to see the arguably some of the greatest teams that have ever existed um, in Liverpool, winning league titles, cups, European cups, and it was something that my generation had never experienced up to this point and to see Liverpool just go on and trophy after trophy after trophy and it wasn't just treble season we lifted other cups after that we lifted another league cup charity shields super cups you know it, 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 Gerard who they won a lot I, he is easily our most trophy manager of this millennium just having that period of knowing that like knowing that Liverpool can win trophies you know we it, 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 it's no longer just a story I'd hear about Liverpool winning trophies. I'd seen it, I'd been there, I'd felt what it felt to win a trophy. And not just one, many. And they're, they're, they're memories I can share with my with, with my dad. I still talk about them now. I'm sure, I'm sure you all do as well, anyone watching this. You, you remember the 2001 season? Because it was when Liverpool were back. It, 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 
this was the start of what we are now, really, effectively. It's, it's, this is the groundwork that was put in to create the absolute juggernaut that we are now. Gerard Houllier, for me, he's um, Liverpool's most important manager since Kenny Daglish resigned in the early 90s. Um, and we're, we're still reaping the rewards of the culture he brought into the club today. He restored the pride to the club that had long been starved of success. More than that, his legacy was felt with Liverpool's most important player of the millennium thus far. And that's Steven Gerrard, who has been uh, quoted as saying that Gerrard Houllier had the biggest influence on his career. Developing him as a model, professional, disciplined and just dedicated and the passion that Julier had, which Carragher and even older players like Gary McAllister have talked about, saying they'd never seen anything like the passion that Gerard Julier instilled in his teams. And you can see that was carried forward in the way that Jamie Carragher and Steven Gerrard used to run the team on the pitch. That passion was instilled in them by Gerard Julier. Also bringing in players like Gary McAllister, who was, I think, about 35 at the time. And, you know, Steven Gerrard's even said that Gary McAllister was a massive influence on his career. When McAllister came into the club, he took Gerrard under his wing and he effectively, because of McAllister, became the player that he, he went on to be, which is easily one of the best players to have ever wore the Liverpool shirt. And I, I think it's easy to say that the success that we're experiencing today and the dynasty that we're on the brink of creating under Jurgen Klopp, that's all built on the foundations and the revolution brought to the club by Gerard Houllier. And that's why uh, I think it was important to make this video because Gerard Houllier is often a forgotten manager in Liverpool's history. You know, you, you talk about Rafa Benitez winning the Champions League and that was a fantastic achievement and one of the best nights of my life, but that was Houllier's team. It may have been under Rafa's tutelage and leadership, but that was they were Houllier's players. And at the end of that game in Istanbul, Houllier went into the dressing room because they were all his players. Ultimately, that success was his. He built that team. And then you have the, the, the time after Benitez when Ix and Gillette took over and the club just ended up going on the downhill. And if it wasn't for Julier having built the, the foundations that he did and brought the continental feeling to the club and modernising the, the infrastructure of the club, we may not have survived that. It, 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 you can't understate how important Gerard Houllier and his reign was to this club. Right, and that's the end of our video today. Thank you all for tuning in. If you've liked what you've seen, please um, drop a like, drop a comment, and please subscribe. Um, this is the kind of video I'm going to start doing more of in the, in the coming months. Uh, I, I'm, <laughs> I have a history degree, so uh, history is something I'm very keen on, and the history of my football club, history of Liverpool FC is something I'm also very keen on. So I think it's something that I, I would like to do more of. Um, so if you'd like to see more of it in the future, please drop a comment and let us know. Um, also, we do have social media now, and um, we are doing live uh, weekly live streams on Facebook. Uh, so if you are interested in watching some uh, live streams from the Unbearable Reds, please follow our Facebook page that will be linked down below. Uh, we also have Twitter, and we are soon going to be expanding into Instagram as well for daily news updates. Um, so yeah, thanks for your time, thanks for watching, and as always, up the Reds.